do you think non-First Nations Canadians care about this story? I would say diplomatically. <laughs> so that means no, you don't. <laughs> they do when it affects them. And the case that I'm trying to make is that it always affects us together. I'll give you an example. I told a story on The National about my father's experience with residential schools. And my father was brutalized. He was, yeah, he was raped by a nun, you know? There's no way around it. Um, when it is a dark-skinned native man telling his story with black and white photos from another generation, I don't think that the average Canadian relates to that. When I told this story, I put my son in front of the camera, and he's fair-skinned and he's five years old, and I started to wonder, what if, you know, I look at my son and now he's the age that my dad was when he was taken away. Could he handle the beatings? Could he handle the other things that I don't even want to think about? And I think when a non-native Canadian sees that, they see somebody who looks like their son, who looks like their grandson, then all of a sudden, holy cow, that's what happened to these people. Yeah, people Some, really somebody went into that. their somebody went into their homes. What if they tried? What if they came to the suburbs and took away my five-year-old grand, grandson? What would that mean to us? What would it mean if they they took you know little Billy or Jane away from the the the, the schoolyard and you know took them to some totally foreign, different country? You know what I mean? And that's what I'm talking about. When we get past these barriers, these fences that divide us. We have a lot in common, you know what I mean? And so with storytelling, I believe that we can break down the barriers, we can break down the fences, and we can say, you know, come walk a mile in my moccasins. Right.